Good day everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how I created these fun floating bubble photos. We're going to go through every step of the process, so let's get into it. I started by getting a bubble gun from Kmart, which was rated at shooting 10,000 bubbles a minute. I was getting married in a few weeks and we wanted to test these out for our wedding, so it was a good chance to kill two birds with one stone. I knew a couple of things going into this shoot. I knew that I wanted to have different colored backgrounds and that I wanted to be able to swap the backgrounds out easily. I also knew that I wanted to have a nice rim light around the edge of the bubble. And so knowing this helped me decide how I was gonna put all these things together. I used a big scrim for my backdrop and I fired a strobe with some gels attached to it. I ended up putting a bit of Savage Translum between these two as well to help diffuse the light a little bit more and spread out the color more easily but this would allow me to swap out the colors and have any color I could imagine. To light the bubbles, I went with two 140 centimeter strip boxes, one above and one to the left, making a right angle. The plan was to fire the bubbles into these strip boxes, which would give me this rim light around the edge of the bubbles. What I found though was I wasn't super happy with it. The bubbles were looking a little bit flat dimensionally with the light all the way around the edge. So I ended up moving one of the strip boxes slightly to the front of the bubbles, closer to the camera, which gave the bubbles a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. As a side note, you only need two lights to light bubbles because the highlight from the lights shows up in both sides of the bubbles, giving you four highlights. So this is a way of simplifying the setup a little bit. By moving the fill light around to the front, I started to get a little bit of spill on the background and this was causing the background colors to wash out. I needed a way of controlling this. I couldn't add a grid to the strip boxes because then the grid pattern would show up in the highlights. So what I did was I flagged the light going towards the background by adding in a big sheet of polyboard and this fixed it no problems. To recap the setup of the shot, for the background I used a gelled strobe going into a scrim with a sheet of diffusion material in between. I used two strip lights, one from directly above and one from the left and slightly to the front of the bubbles. And I also used a polyboard as a flag to stop light from spilling onto the backdrop. Once all this was set up, I was pretty much good to go and so the only thing left to do was to take heaps of photos of bubbles. The trickiest part was that once the bubbles left the gun, they just kind of went everywhere. This makes dealing with the depth of field a really big challenge and it never felt like I really had enough of it. I dealt with this in a couple of ways. One way was using a slightly longer lens. I used a 90mm lens for this shoot. I also moved the camera further back with the intention of cropping in later, which would give me a larger depth of field and also give me a bit of wiggle room with my composition and also by using a really narrow aperture. I was shooting around f11, f16. Because you have the narrow aperture, it means you need to beef up your lights to compensate and this causes some new problems. By beefing up the power of the lights, your flash duration gets longer, and so there's less of a chance that you're actually gonna freeze the bubbles. But we're gonna come back to this problem a little bit later. I started taking the photos in manual focus, but I also found I wasn't having too much success with this. What would happen is the bubbles wouldn't disperse evenly to the front and back of the gun when I was taking the photos. They would drift either forwards or backwards, depending on which way they felt like at the time. And so this meant that even though I locked in my manual focus on the center, it would still go out of focus as it moved away from the bubble gun. I ended up using continuous autofocus and having every focus point activated, which was unusual. I very rarely ever use this combination, but it gave us our highest success rate. And with the modeling lights on, the camera picked up the bubbles quite easily off the backdrop. So recapping the camera settings that I used, I used my Sony a7R 4 which gave me heaps of resolution so that I would be able to crop in later. I used a 90mm lens with an f-stop of around f11 to f16. My shutter speed was set to 1 160th of a second to sync with my flash and I used an ISO of 100. If you needed to, you could bump up the ISO here to give you a little bit more headroom with your flash power or with your aperture. And for the focus, I used continuous autofocus mode with a wide autofocus area. I was still struggling a bit to get everything sharp because the bubbles were spreading out a bit too much by the time I took the photo and so I needed a way of photographing the bubbles so they were a little bit more contained. By taking photos closer to the barrel of the gun it would give us a more contained spread but this created some more problems. Because the bubbles were coming out of the gun quite quickly they'd often appear blurry 
and it also made them look too organized, whereas I wanted them to look random. What ended up working best was that we had two people, one photographer saying stop and go on the bubbles, the other person shooting the bubbles and bursts, and this gave us the highest success rate. By shooting a burst of bubbles and giving them a little bit of time to settle, it would let them form random patterns and also give them a chance to slow down so there was a better chance that we'd get the bubble sharp. Then it was just a matter of waiting for the right patterns to form, taking hundreds and hundreds of photos and ending up with some great compositions. It was a bit of trial and error to get the pacing down pat, but once we got into a good rhythm, we started to get heaps of good photos. We went through a heap of different gels, mixing up the backgrounds and picked out our favourite shots. With our favourites, we gave them a little bit of TLC in Photoshop. It involved choosing the best combination of bubbles within the larger chaotic composition, and then cropping out a section that created a nice arrangement of bubbles and removing all the undesirable specks and reflections. Removing these elements was super tedious, so I've only bothered to do it for one image for the video to give you a demonstration of the process. You can be as pedantic as you want with this, but it does look nice to have clean and crisp bubbles. I used a combination of the clone, heel, spot removal and patch tools to do this, depending on what worked best for the situation. I found that the spot removal tool worked best for doing most of the legwork, particularly for removing the reflections of other bubbles in the bubbles that I wanted to keep. I used the clone tool for tidying up the edges along the highlights and the heel tool for smoothing out any patchy looking colours after I'd done these first two processes. The patch tool was good for getting rid of any of the large bubbles that I didn't want in the final photo. You can also use this opportunity to play around with the colours and contrast a bit. I added a smidge more punch with a pretty standard S-curve for my contrast and brought out the colours a bit more in the highlights by adding in some vibrance. You could also play around with the hue of the colour here if you wanted to tweak it to something different from what you originally shot. I'm really happy with the end results, I think they look great, they're exactly what I was hoping for when I went to do this shoot and I think they're going to make for some amazing prints. I'm going to be releasing more videos regularly over the next few months so if you'd like to see more like this stick around, otherwise have a good one and I'll see you next time. Thank you.